When last we left our adventurers, they had just escaped from the the horror that was the destruction the destroyed Waterdeep and the mocks that now live in and the glaring eye of still Havity. Guided by a new face, Daitora, to their extraction, where they were whisked away down to the depths of Torel and to the city of Menzo Baranzan. Once there, they are guided uh, quickly and efficiently by Aegis, first to Laurel Silverhand, representative of all surface dwellers in Menzo Baranzan, who appears to be residing at the Bianre household, the lead house of Menzo Baranzan. A brief exchange occurs, and you swiftly move off and re-discover that the Wandering Weasel is in town. Aegis, however, has a tight schedule to keep on and takes you quickly to the <clears throat> to the School of Arcane in Menzo Baranzan, and and therein takes you to see Nyla Stuth, Aegis's more or less contractor slash. boss sort of deal. But as Eve makes herself known to her, there is a brief exchange where Nyla seems to think that Eve is her lost daughter revealed to be Amaranth. An explanation follows suit, and eventually a messenger carrying the black staff walks in, and as it passes Eve, she unwillingly latches onto it and hears her own voice say, Why did I come back? But before we get to that, Daitora, Leilani, and Virgil are outside. You watch the all the uh, the people that seem to be knowing go into the room with the there, and you just sort of listen in. But Daitora, there's something. There's something. Off. I want you to roll me a perception check uh, with advantage. I can certainly try. You have. That's a, great. A ten. <laughs> you. You're getting some odd vibes from Leilani and Virgil. Oh yeah, I could smell these motherfuckers. <laughs> it, right, no, you got the vampire and the, the lycanthropy thing, like, right off the bat. But there seems to be something else. But you're not sure what. Well, that's thoroughly disconcerting. Mm -hmm. Um. Leilani. <laughs> Even though you're far away from where you first felt it. 
you still feel that feeling of being watched. Like, you haven't shaken it at all. <sighs> and as in... Right now, you feel like it's almost oppressive. It is what it you, this feeling of being watched. It's like it's it's like it's glaring at you. Has it gotten worse since we came down here? Yes. Ooh. Leilani, who has been kind of hanging out by the entrance of the the academy that everyone walked into is just kind of, like, rubbing her arms and looking up and around. And at some point, she kind of uh, makes eye contact with with Daitura. Kind of, wait, was, was Daitura wearing, like, a, a really shadowy helmet or something? Yep, it's a fully enclosed um, steel raven's beak helm. Hmm... So you are looking into two black pits. <laughs> well, she locks eyes with two voids. And uh, kind of sidles a little closer. Hey! So, huh. You don't, you don't look like anyone that I've seen in the... In this faction before are you privy to what's what the deal is with this place uh, I have some details but only what I need to know I'm not from here Ugh, kind of rolls her eyes yeah that seems to be a running theme around here they really like playing things close to the vest don't they Seems very counterproductive for, you know, cooperative missions and things like that. Hey, if you, you say so. <laughs> what, do you think that we're able to accomplish our tasks just as efficiently, not knowing what the hell we're doing? I don't particularly care about the details. I'll be here until I'm done, and then I'll be doing something else. Huh? Interesting. Wonder what else important there is to do in the world these days. But anyway, you wouldn't happen to know anything about. I mean, there are a bunch of powerful mages in this city, right? That's what I've been told. Do you think they've put in any wards against, like, you know... Kind of waggles her fingers in a, in a wacky, like, spell-casting kind of way. You know, like, uh, magic that sees what's going on in other places and things like that. Because I don't know about you, but I'm getting a really, really weird feeling that I'm being watched. Mm, well, I'm not of a magic persuasion myself. Perhaps one of the other mages would be of more assistance to your nagging questions. <laughs> oh, no one wants to answer those. I can only imagine why. Gives them a look. Well, here's one more for you, just for curiosity's sake. What is it that you're so eager to get back to? Like I said, I'm not from here. And this is one of the less interesting jobs that I've been given these past few centuries. But the Queen wills that I'm here, and so I am here. Last few centuries, huh? What queen are we talking about? There aren't really very many of those left in these parts. I am something of an envoy for the Raven Queen. It is at her bidding that I travel the realms and 
clean up messes, I suppose. Now, knowledge of the Raven Queen, is that something that's widely known, like who she is? Yeah, she's a, she's a deity, and um, uh, in, in recent years prior to the, the collapse of General Surface Society, um, she was actually gaining quite a bit of uh, popularity. Envoy of a deity, huh? Fancy. She sent you here, then? Well, I didn't come here of my own volition, that's for sure. I'm not one for the sights. <laughs> Understandable, they're particularly boring lately. But what did she send you to do exactly? Hmm. You know, I'll keep that to myself, thanks. Hmm. All right, guess I can't help with that either, then. Man, nobody wants to share any helpful information to their allies in this place. Ah, <sighs> rain. Kind of goes back to looking around, trying to piece together where this sensation of being watched might be coming from. Uh, go ahead and roll another insight. You're looking around, you're looking around, but no matter what, it always feels like it's over your shoulder, or closer to your shoulder. You, you really start to think about it, and you realize that this sense of being watched is all in your head. But not like you're crazy in your head. Like there is something watching you in your head. What the? You now go ahead and roll me a charisma save. Oh. Upon this realization, you have the knee-jerk, your mind has the knee-jerk reaction to push this, this thing out. But, you push on it, and it's like a wall. Whatever it is, you can't get it out. Not on your own, at least. kind of passes her hands over her eyes and just covers them for a moment. Only I'm allowed to use these. <sighs> Takes her hands away. Hey you, unhelpful one. Big shot mage that's in there is apparently busy. Nowhere I can talk to any others. I'm sure if you look around long enough and you ask the drow very, very nicely, they'll point you in a direction. Have fun. Glares. Good luck with your mission. I think you're gonna need it. Leilani will head back in the direction that uh, they originally met Grexon in. Okay. You walk down that way by yourself. And you here. They're all so very unhelpful, aren't they? Twirls around, looking for the source of this voice. You see no source, but you... you know where it came from. 
Listen, I don't know who you are or whose mind you think you're invading, but you're going to make some very powerful enemies if you stick around. Be a deer and leave, won't you? Why enemies? Well, allies tend to ask a little more nicely before they hitch a ride. I have done this to establish a dialogue. I have not done anything to you, have I? Merely established a connection. One you've been sitting on since we escaped the tower and just quietly watched. But sure, let's go with that. Who are you and what do you want? Who I am... is not... the right question. Who we are can be your friends. How pleasant. Now, Max, mm -hmm. the Blue Court has been contending with a particular faction lately. That particular faction wouldn't be known for stuff like this, would it? Which particular faction are you thinking of? The one with the flying ships. Roll history with advantage. Yeah, with the 16. Yeah. The, the creatures that are on those nautiloids are known for psychic connections and psionic abilities. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. This is... This is taking a turn. Friend... Are you trying to establish some sort of truce? Good luck with that. You might want to aim for one of the higher-ups instead of little old me, if that's your goal. Those of a higher standing are usually there out of stubbornness. Where have you not seen that with all the resistance you've met? Why aren't you in the room, hearing what's going on? You're so smart, you know why. People like me are not to be trusted. Probably a wise decision, as leaders tend to be. I'll ask again, what do you want? My patience is running very thin today. What we seek is knowledge as to why you absconded with something that's has been lying in a tomb for a year. Oh, <laughs> that thing we grabbed from the tower? Indeed. Yeah, you know, I would love to know that too. But as you've seen, that's something that I'm not privy to. And I doubt they're going to make me privy to it. So if that's what you want here, 
I think you're about as out of luck as I am. There are other ways. The one ages. Mm-hmm. Yes, if you that... uh-huh. were to find him, just whilst he was in his reverie, let us know, and we will share in the knowledge of what is truly going on. Just tap him on the forehead. And why should I trust that you'll be honest with that knowledge? We aren't exactly on the same side. The connection will go through you. I will have no choice but to share every bit of information extracted. Does this seem like this person or entity is being on the level? You can roll an insight check. Oops, that's not with advantage. With a 12? It is a voice inside your mind. Yeah, that's fair. There is no face. There, there's, there's no emotion either. Hmm. Uh, now question, these entities, are they directly allied with Stilhavity as far as Blue Court is aware, or are they just kind of taking, are they just like opportunists? Um, it's, it's hard to tell. Because... All the forces of still having all the mocks are most of them are just mindless monsters that just devour everything that they can. And the and the mind flares are the opposite. Very very intellectual, very very goal oriented. It's You, the blue court has not seen evidence of a correlation. I don't suppose you'd share with me what you plan to do with this information, would you? Well, how would I know what I am going to do if I do not know what I do not know? You know, that's been my point this whole time. But it sounds a lot more like bullshit coming from your mouth. Believe what you want. Stay and be treated as nothing but vermin, likely to be exterminated once they complete whatever it is they're going to. I'd like to see them try it. <laughs> but she will turn back around and and stroll back in the direction of the the academy. Aegis was in there with the others, right? Yeah, Aegis uh, introduced everyone to uh, Pyla. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. You head back and you get back just in time to see the door close. As Daitora, you just saw the courier walk in.
and as you walk back, you immediately hear a commotion inside, where we jump to Bosch and Aegis, you saw Eve grab the staff like lightning quick, like faster than you can whip out a blade, Aegis, uh, and just immediately eyes roll up in the back of the he uh, Eve's head, and she immediately falls unconscious, but still gripping the staff, and in that same moment, the blade on her hip swirls and comes out and becomes Chelevi once more. And both of you see that both the Drow Courier and Nyla Stulth are about to take hostile actions against Chelevi. You have a moment of, of reaction. This is a snap thing. Okay. So, as things quickly fire, fire off, Aegis yells out, Wait a moment. And then pointing over to who looks like the commander, but isn't. Yeah. Ash will also jump in and try to interpose his body which is he can like Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a sec. Right. I would like you both to roll persuasion checks. I am the most persuasive. <laughs> I bet you guys are. Totally. You got this. That makes sense. Oh. Yeah. Shit. Do we two from the outside have burst in, or? That would be like your thing of just getting in the door and kind of seeing it happen. By the time you get in there, you wouldn't be able to stop anything from happening. But if anything starts, yeah. you, then you'll be able to. Uh, yeah, so natural one. Uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, I'm going to say that 10 was enough to kind of shake Nyla Stulf so that it interrupts her casting but the drow courier who is a seasoned warrior, most of them are uh, is going to continue to make their swing against uh, Chelevi with their sword uh, and unfortunately that's going to hit see a, uh, a thin uh, scimitar-like blade kind of whip out and slash against Chelevi, dealing a, a, dealing a big gash. Um, but then uh, Daitora and, and uh, Leilani burst in the door and because, because Amrath was, be, was able to be talked down, uh, you you standing there uh, in in that kind of taking command kind of pose Aegis and, and Bosch uh, he kind of hold, still holds his weapon kind of towards you need to explain Aegis I was going to get there I did say 
looking over at the unconscious Eve now holding the staff and over at Bosch that these people had vital information about still have it. And a identical version of the commander was fighting against the commander that showed up. of her too? I, I guess, yeah. I mean, we had some rough starts with her, but um, she's she's with us. She's helped us a lot. I put my life on the line and trusted my instincts on this, Miss Nyla. I... I, looking at her, take full responsibilities for my actions, and I just hope that this actually does prove useful what they say that they have. <sighs> All right. Kind of. I um. Bosch has his hands up and like. I try to get it. Out of her hands, I don't even know if she's okay. Right. Well, be care, be careful. Not sure what's happened. Um, you can see that Shelby, um, what she did in that reaction was actually catch Eve before she fell to the ground. Um, and now that Nyla can can kind of see what it is that Shelby's doing and realize that she's just trying to help, uh, it does help with your. Um, uh, argument. <sighs> why? Why wasn't I told that there was a mark in the city? We had defenses for that. And everyone hears a voice from the doorway. Oh, perhaps I can explain explain that. As you see, a very flamboyant. A uh, flamboyantly dressed drow with a wide brim hat that's feathered standing at the door. As you know, I am in charge of uh, keeping marks out of the city. I'll admit that uh, we did let this one slip by on purpose, but that is because Ludra said something interesting about this one. And, well, as you can see, Interesting. I'd like to be notified of that next time, Jarl Axel. I was going to get around to it. I see that I got here a bit too late for the party, though. Oh uh, yeah, well, I mean, still trying to figure stuff out. Got anything to contribute, Cope. Right on ahead. Certainly, and he will. He, I, I forget. I always forget to mention he has an eye patch as well, and he takes that eye patch and shifts it from his left eye to his right eye, where you can see that he has two perfectly functional eyes. Uh, <laughs> oh darn! I was hoping he was hiding a sharing gun under there. <laughs> <laughs> nope, two perfectly fine eyes. Uh, but you can see that he kind of looks intensely at. Uh, at the unconscious Eve. Bosch, I believe you were also uh, planning on trying to take the staff from Eve. Oh. Uh, uh, roll athletics. Am I able to it? Okay. With a natural <laughs> 20, you could get it out of Eve's hand. You will break Eve's hand doing it. 
Yeah, I see the amount of strain and stop before hurting her. Yeah, and you know, especially with Nat 20, you know that Eve's not that strong, so you know that there's also some magic going on here. Kind of hold my hands up after crying, be like, I could, um, I could take your hands off, but that's about as I can do. Be somebody magic wants to try. I don't think that's going to have the right effect. There's a lot more going on here than just her holding on to it with the death grip. There's some kind of connection going on here. Magically so. And some sort of intertwining. I haven't seen this kind of stuff since... No sense of spell plague, really. Miss Nyla. Yes? What... What do you think we should do? Well, we should get her to... The infirmary here. At least a nice bed and proper facilities in case this turns out to be much more than that. Okay. Well, uh, Bosch, was it? Oh. You do you seem quite strong. I can yeah, show I you this. to the inf I can show you to the infirmary. Gabby Eve with one arm. Okay. He just before he leaves the room, he looks back at at Nyla Stools. I'm sorry I couldn't say it sooner. It's my my fault that things escalated to this. And takes like a like a deep bow for leaving. It'll be a long conversation. See to her. Let me know if anything changes. Okay. And, uh, you see, Aegis now leave the room. Alright. Asha's following. Yeah, Daytura just shadows Aegis. Does Leilani follow? Um, absolutely. Alright. Uh, There's a conga line. Yep. You notice that the uh, the flamboyant figure Jarlaxle comes with you as well. That's good, because she was keeping an eye over her shoulder to see which direction he went in. Virgil, who has kind of been uh, standing up with the corner, just like, this is too much, I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> ah, same Virgil. Yeah. They really are kind of the same. <laughs> Except one's just, you know, one way, one's another way. Mm -hmm. Bit furrier, bit paler. Both totally done with everything. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I do want to, as we're walking, try to surreptitiously ask Tia, uh, considering that reaction, you want to say who you are, or just um, let it ride? Oh, don't worry. We're actually quite uh, fond of dragons around here, says Jarlaxle. Um, okay, thanks, buddy. <laughs> no problem. <sighs> okay, here we are. Uh, escorting to the infirmary. You see that there is uh, one uh, uh, female drow uh, not in your typical 
Nurse Schmock, uh, still kind of in like these uh, really tight gown that is like black and has spiderweb patterns. Uh, you, you're in the city of spiders, so. <laughs> What is wrong with this one? Uh, you might have to tell us, Doc. Uh, she pushed this thing all over. Hmm. Well, set her on the real, bed. Real good on grip on it. Hmm. Is the item cursed? Or do you know? Rug. Well, considering how long it's been out of the hands of of a black staff and in the hands of something else from what the initial reports were saying. Anything could be amiss with this. Aegis. Uh mm-hmm. Roll in insight. Okay. I'd, say, I'd actually give you to this with advantage on account of its uh, being very fresh in your mind uh, and kind of obvious. Um, okay. You haven't really told people who was holding the the staff when you got there. Like you kind of gave a report to to Miss Silverhand and uh, Nyla, but that's but that's about it. The original person that was holding the staff. Well, when you had at the at the Black Staff Tower, um, the staff was being held by an Oblex. Yeah, that kind of just, like, that kind of became, well, actually, when, because Aegis never went into that room, he, the, some weird, like, the, the thing teleported in there, and then he killed him, and then grabbed the staff. So did it look like an Ublix at the time that it teleported into that room? Um, I'm trying to remember. Because all that creepy shit that was like, oh, it's an Ublex, was, he wasn't in the side of that. Because, what did you take it from? Because the, what happened was, I was stuck in the mirror, in like the, all the doorways, and Wes and Virgil were dealing with the Ublex, and he, as it was dying, you know, like, as he was like dying, he teleported into the lower level where I was, and then I finished him off. Okay. So, you so would, you I don't... Been, yes, you... Killing it, and plus with all the damage it sustained, you would have known that it was some sort of ooze. Definitely malevolent. Okay. So, yeah. So, with that, you would have known that. Um, but with how fast it went, I'm not even sure... Maybe you even skipped over that in all of your recounting so far, and just kind of went with the big picture stuff. Espe yeah, especially because I was getting stabbed to death by by a small child. Right. <laughs> right, because you know, explaining that would also involve explaining, you know, the whole thing with Leilani. So yes, yeah. So if you haven't explained the thing with Leilani, then you probably haven't talked about that. So that's even more interesting, that this person seems to know that, even though you haven't told anyone yet. Hmm. Hey. It's starting to hurt. It's been a long day.
Okay, you want to take a nap? Um, kind of sitting on the, you're like, um, lean on the side of the wall. I'm tasked with taking, making sure that the condition of Eve and the staff But now thinking about it, there was something holding on to that thing. <sighs> uh, Want to share? Might be important. Some sort of evil looking oozy creature it had partial forms of a human. Leilani will actually speak up from the corner of the room. Whatever that disgusting creature was. It seemed to have the ability to touch people's minds. I could feel it rummaging around in my the memories. Uh, so kind of weird. It's been a while. Is is that something that Oblex did to us in Gnome Garden? Uh, roll a history check. Hey. Fourteen. sounds like the thing you went up against in Gnome Garden. Huh. I mean, it also also kind of sounds like a mock. Like, they also appear to be able to talk to people's brains and be squishy. So, I don't know. Okay. Could have also been a mock. A lot of squish, a lot of silex. Oh. Yeah. If it was able to tap into one's mind, then that could spell trouble. Uh, you see A just kind of go back to a standing position and move over towards Eve. Uh, you can see that Chelaby is uh, standing next to Eve on the other side. And Bosch, as you kind of glance over there, Chelaby has a concerned and frustrated look on her. Uh, really, you've been real quiet. I have You're been up. trying to reach her. Oh. But I've been rebuffed. That's all angles.
or maybe I'm just not as connected as I am where we're from. I mean, does it seem like something's trying to hurt her? This isn't the mock pulling this on the little one. Some kind of ploy to get closer to the staff. You see Aegis cast begin to cast the spell. I am just doing a bit of extra precaution at the moment. I mean, um, I know Eve pretty well. Staff, I have no clue. Uh, like the doc said, there could be all kinds of weird stuff on it. I don't think any of us have any clue about the staff, which is really a shame. He just cast non-detection on Eve. On Eve? Yes. Can you give me that spell card? Yes, I can. Not sure it will do anything, but give it a try. Arcana, eh? Mm -hmm. A natural Ooh. 20. Oh. You cast the spell, and you successfully place it on one of them. Oh. Mm. One? Yeah. What, what you doing there? I I was casting a spell to block out any magical s s detection or anything to that a being might perceive through them and I felt something I felt one Eve. I, but but I, but there's another. I have heard rumors. Jarlax will kind of pipes up. Rumors. A most interesting property about this staff, I have heard. I spent many years living in Waterdeep, you see. And the, the Black Staff was always an object of my interest, given its magical potential. But I had always heard that the position of Black Staff is not exactly one to covet, as tenure. Well, it is all consuming. Are, are you saying that it traps the souls of the wielders? When their service is done to the city, is what I've heard. But of course, that doesn't seem to be what's happening here. 
And I don't think I've ever heard of a Blackstaff doing things on its own like this. A most interesting development. And you, the Mark, you... You said you can't get in. I'm assuming some kind of psionic abilities. Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happens I know a psionicist. I think that might be able to assist us. And Leilani, the patch of shadow that you've been kind of sitting in, hiding, uh, mm -hmm. gets a little darker, and you realize that you are no longer alone in that patch of shadow. Oh. Camborio. As a, uh, another drow uh, walks out of your little hiding spot, you have no idea how he got in there without your no noticing him. But he walks out, gives a slight bow to all of you. Gives a slight bow back. It also is... a bow. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I'm certain to someone that doesn't have psionic abilities would say something like that. Jalaxel, are we really going to try to break this halfling free? Is it really worth the trouble? Jalaxel kind of gives him a look. <sighs> Fine. I will give an examination of the girl. It will take some time. This artifact is powerful. I recommend you all get some, kind of looks at all of you up and down, some rest. All right. Um, can I turn this to Aegis? Like, is there some place around here we can stay? Probably if I can. Uh, that wandering weasel got a room there, but uh, I can find my way back. Yes, I. You probably could find some stay there. I will be going to the slums. I need to check on some folks there. And there's sufficient rooms there that I've been tending to. And kind of kind of gives kind of a, um, a long, like a long gaze. Uh, that's, there's some extra room there if, if you wish, but I think it's a good idea to get some rest. I figure I better check in on Virgil. When he gets to uh, rooting and drinking, it can be pretty rough. Hmm. Alright. Well, it seems that this is where we will part ways for the moment. Okay. Uh, oh. See you later, I guess. You need guidance to the Wandering Weasel? Okay. Just so happens to be one of my favorite spots in town. I actually have a friend waiting there right now. Hey, nice, uh, I kind of figure this isn't a great city to be lost in. Eh, 
that just depends on who you run into. Don't worry, it's been... It's been a lot better over the past year than it has been in the past... Oh, centuries, so... Uh, I guess, why don't you tell me about it on the way? Hmm, certainly. And he will lead uh, you and Tia. Uh, kind of give a very long-winded uh, uh, history lesson on Menzo Berenzon. Um Despite being very charismatic, he tells it in the most boring way. <laughs> okay. Which you can actually roll an like insight on that. Like, is this guy per or purposely being boring? You can tell that he actually is purposely being boring in in retelling the the history of Benzo Berenson. And not only that, you get the feeling he actually doesn't like this place. Like, he actually doesn't like Menzo Marinza. I get it. Yes, but he will uh, lead you into uh, What are Leilani and Daitura doing? That's a great question. <laughs> uh. One thing I will say is... Uh, so what the wandering weasel is actually pretty widely known down here especially amongst the surface population because it is the only tavern in the city to get stuff that used to be on the surface <laughs> is the only place that has ale because you can't exactly grow wheat underground right oh uh, you know what might as well tag along and they love me Leilani is deliberately thinking in her head to its other occupant after that whole conversation. You know, as much as I have a grudge against that little worm and would like to do whatever I could to make his day a little less bright, he didn't seem to know very much about the staff compared to some of these other people in the room. Certain I should switch targets. Those individuals are particularly shielded against my kind. Ugh, what use are you? <laughs> I have a great many uses to my friends. Yeah, I'm sure you've got plenty of those I could interview for those uses. Anyway. She, uh, will just kind of tag along after Aegis. Not particularly trying to be unseen or anything. Alright. Daitora, Bosch, Tia, and Jarlaxel. You all head down until eventually you do reach a familiar part of the city. Bosch, the part that you had passed by, the bazaar. And eventually you find yourself at that familiar door. I go inside. Go inside. Hello and welcome to the Wandering Weasel. Uh, hi. To see ya. Oh, hello. Your friend's already here. He points over at the bar and you see Virgil's out. Just, oh, uh, just completely out. <laughs> 
I think he had a bit too much to drink. Yeah, um, but Virgil is probably just the right amount. Um, want me to get him out over to his room? Oh, hmm. Uh, he kind of pats his, his uh, pockets. Do you already have a key, or...? Pretty sure Eve has the key. Mm. But you do have a key. Mm. Well, your, yes. room, your room might be there. Oh yeah, point of order. I, I do have a room key, don't I? Or, is, or do we just? You just open it. You have a, open you have a key that lets you get. Uh, to and fro the tavern every once in a while, and Eve does hold on to that. But for your actual rooms, they're all just kind of magically enchanted to open to your touch. Um. Oh, let's do a science experiment. Um, kind of curious if I do actually have a room here. Um, I will head through the hallway and see if there is a room that's marked for me. Alright. Roll a d20. Okay. I'd love to hear that. Yeah, 19. You take a step, the familiar kind of whirring of the doors go by, and you find yourself in front of your room. Wait, uh... I guess it's a small step for science or whatever. Uh, and I will look inside and see if it's what I expect. Yeah, you look inside, it's your room. Albeit the the bed seems to be a bit wider than what you remember. Huh. Okay, uh... Yeah, it went from a twin to a to a queen. Ah. Or rather a full, I'm sorry. I get my bed size mixed up sometimes. See, I guess it's, it's twin, full, queen, king, yeah? That should be it. I couldn't tell you. Uh, head. Actually, yeah. Uh... I like check in because it's just Tia with me at this point. I'm like, how are you feeling? Maybe I got the tavern, or do you want to crash? <sighs> well, I am. I don't know. It's a lot been going on, and the whole kind of gestures up. Not knowing. Uh, that's kind of weird. It's a lot to process. Mm -hmm. we, we could ask Amon about it, but uh, we could. it was the kind of stuff that might have been trouble last time. I don't know. I think... I think with everything that's going on, I think a little time to myself might be in order. Just to process. Right. Um, um, mind if I, uh, I make sure it was okay? Sure. I'll be in here. Be back soon. All right, you head back to the bar. I'd like you to make a perception check. Okay. Nineteen. You're walking back into the bar, and now that you're kind of on the other side of the bar, you glance 
over to one of the corners, and you see uh, an individual there reading a, a book. And just for a moment, it kind of, the, the book kind of dips down a little bit, showing a little bit of their face, their uh, feminine face, and you see a very familiar tattoo under their right eye. But it's definitely not the same person, same looking person that you saw that tattoo on originally. The sort of fort image that you saw on Ziblina. Like, walk slightly past the table and be like, What? Well, I couldn't help but notice a pretty sweet tattoo there. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> Am I going to die doing this? <laughs> <laughs> she completely <laughs> ignores you. Not a bad outcome, rip, all things considered. Mm-hmm. All right, shrug, back up to the bar. But you did get closer. Roll... Roll investigation. Hey? Yeah. <laughs> also real good at this. With an 11? There's a resemblance between this lady and Ziblina, but with some key differences. First off, Ziblina has starch, smooth white hair, whereas this individual has jet raven hair, uh, also a lot younger than Ziblina as well. Ziblina looked like they were in their mid-30s, this person looks like they're in their young 20s. They um like to kind of turn around after shrugging, I'm like. Unless I'm not a creep here, this might actually be kind of important. Um, you look a lot like somebody who would not be here. Um, she's from another universe or something. Um, Figure you might be, um, might know Amaranth and uh, possibly Isla. At the. Ring a bell. So, just before you said those names, she was actually starting to say, Is this your attempt at a pickup line or. And then you say Amaranth. <laughs> and just. And Isla. I do. How do you know them? Um, it's complicated. Um, so, we're, I mean, I, I say we, I realize it's just me standing here. Um, I think I passed out is with me. Um, Which one? And you realize <laughs> that on the other side of Virgil that you didn't see when you walked in is a dwarf who is also passed out next to him. <laughs> I, I don't know that guy. Um, uh, but, yeah, the other one. And, um, actually, is is Jarlaxel still in the bar? Uh, yes, he's actually sitting next down next to the dwarf. Okay. Um, might have a better idea, too, of what's been going on here. We kind of just came in from really far off, actually talking to uh, 
talking to Zablina, who's this person who looks a lot like you, except white hair. Kind of has her own uh, mention that she rules over. Uh, and you're asking if I know this Zablina? Uh, people keep talking about this this thing called uh, Echoes, and I think that might be uh, you and her. Echoes? Uh, you know, like people in different realities who are same but different. Like I've been told that there's a uh, guy who's the lord of the hunt who uh leads the armies of the summer court and uh that's me but it's not me that's so, am i making any sense this is also so are you telling me that shit. you're an echo of someone from this realm Roll a persuasion check. Okay. Ash is truly the ladies' man. Mm -hmm. 18. Ooh. She she closes her book. Say I believe you. Is it as bad as it is here, there? Um, not yet, but I have a feeling it might be about to. Well, if you're speaking the truth, at least you prove the theory I was working on, but not the practical application. Uh, um. I'd have guessed that theories aren't really, like, my specialty. Uh, normally I'd have you talk to Eve, uh, but she's kind of unconscious and won't let go of Blackstaff. The Blackstaff? It's back? It's here? Uh, Shoot, what time is uh, it? Yep. <sighs> I'm late. <laughs> and she starts to, to stand up. And wait, how'd you know about the Black Staff? And, and more, you said you knew that you knew Amaranth. You don't know. Well, it's complicated. I don't know. The person here called Amaranth. You know, Eve, who I guess is an echo of Amaranth. Then his mom. This is an echo of my daughter. Her name here? is Amaranth. Oh! <laughs> what the fuck? Uh. Guess? I realize this is all real confusing, um, because, like I said, Echoes are the same person, but not the same person. Right. That's. <sighs> Yeah, uh, I mean, there's this kind of a, there's a doctor who was checking her out, but then didn't really know anything, and then this other guy kind of appeared out of shadow after, uh, oh, what, uh, eye patch here. Yeah, he does that. Loves doing it. It's like his job or something. But, anyway, Blackstaff, I need to go do that. You're staying here? Yeah. Good. I have more things to discuss with you once I return. <sighs> oh, I should give you my name. Natasha Yaga. Ah, uh, okay. That makes more sense. Uh, but yeah, good to meet you. I'm Bosch. Definitely more things to talk about. And she leaves and exits the tavern. Uh, 
Daitora. Uh, kind of like. Yeah. Mm hmm. Have you just kind of been lurking and listening? The entire time. Right. That. That's kind of the whole vibe. Right. That conversation about echoes kind of got your attention a little bit because it's it's similar to kind of the, the abilities that you draw on. Not exactly, but similar. That's sort of. I imagine that he's familiar with the concept because I uh, uh, don't know how much the Raven Queen respects timelines, so he might have been on a few different runs himself. Because his home plane is the Shadowfell. Right. Which Shadowfell... Don't know how that fits into the cosmology. Right. You don't know, and you never thought to ask. Not really important. But you... Yeah, he... But whilst you've drawn on that power, you've never actually heard about an echo being able to exist like that in the same plane as what it's an echo of. Like, that's interesting to you. Because you've only been able to bring the the shadows of your own echo. Mm hmm So an interesting thing for Daitora. Yeah, he is very much a listening presence doesn't really speak unless spoken to this is another job and much less exciting than the last one <laughs> but he is paying attention very much the I'm just here man vibe Although he's wondering what kind of dragon Tia is, but he's, he's not going to ask. He's going to wait for that information to get revealed. Alright. And I'd also like you to make an insight check. Insight, insight. Mm -hmm. Three. That's a three. <laughs> the dice loved me. Unfortunately, you just you, you don't get it. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, also out of character not saying this is boring <laughs> no i i get, that wasn't my intent <laughs> i i get i get daitora's vibe very much so i'm just yeah no i'm, I'm trying to make sure that daitora has something <laughs> you're good no this is the character uh, uh yeah <laughs> just from from his perspective the last job was fighting strahd so he hasn't gotten to the big bad guy yet and he lives for the fighting the big bad guy Right now, these right. these randos I, in this place have given him uh, I will small say jobs. That their being that guy that goes on these missions and goes and to these different planes and stuff, you are getting that that vibe, that edge that happens before that big battle. You are getting that, like right, like you are like preparations you know are being made to fight the big bad right and that's uh part of the reason why he's hovering with these these ones specifically because if the fight comes early he's pretty sure it's going to come to them <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he's just uh hovering all right yeah seeing Itura just lurking in the back. Bosch would make an effort to include him, like, uh, hey, you don't have to, just, you know, be off in the corner if you don't want. You can get in here. What, what are you drinking? Water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Itura is just a wall. Have like a is it lemon in it or something? No, it contains the concentrated essence of the souls that I drank this morning. 
Is, can I insight this to see if it's a joke? <laughs> I mean, go ahead. I'll roll the deception for funsies. It's a negative one. Oof. <laughs> it, it, um... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very obvious bullshit. He's just fucking with you. Uh, or as I got the blood of my enemies here, like blows the rest of the drink. I imagine it tastes great. Bet, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to include you, but uh, lurking survived. That I'll well, put you right on. I didn't do that shadowy. Well, I thank you for the effort. Greatly appreciate. It. But you did come with a vampire, so. Well, yeah. I mean, but he's uh, a little more sober, right? Like you and Virgil should, uh, I don't know, hunt over your brooding and stuff. <laughs> Oh no, not the bloodling. That's just a damp here. That's not really. It doesn't carry the same juice as the little girl. Oh. Well, that makes more sense. I was kind of wondering why uh, the little girl was wandering around. Yeah, she's no thin blood like the one who's with you. the heads up. I'm gonna crash. It caused enough damage today, apparently. Have fun. Sleep tight. Just gives a little like wink and points as he's heading out. I imagine you go to pick up Virgil and take him to his room, right? Oh, uh, yeah. All right. I don't actually know if you take an unconscious person to their room, will it let you in? Uh, I think we already did this bit uh, <laughs> a very long time ago. Uh, and I it think be someone I'm pretty out. sure I ruled that, that that was okay. okay. As long as they had permission to get into the room in the first place. Yeah. Um, Can... I can stand back a few feet and toss him into the room. Right. But as you go over to kind of pick up Virgil, uh, John actually looks at you just like, man, yeah, it's probably time to go. And he uh, he pulls out from under his hat a, a little piece of fabric, throws it onto the ground, and there's just a hole there. And he just lightly taps the forehead of the dwarf who falls into the hole. <laughs> he then rolls up the hole, sticks it back in his hat, Right. I'll be getting him to to some rest. And I suppose I'll see uh, both of you tomorrow. Oh, yeah. By the way, big Me. pillar, it's the clock. Was about to ask. Well, toodles. And he leaves the bar. And you go and hope to find Virgil's room. Roll me another d20. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, there was a different complication. Ooh. And luckily, it's right next to your room. Cool. Okay. I don't toss Virgil in. I carefully take him inside and put him on his bed. You set him down, gently, head back to your room. Anything else? I'm all good. All right. Assuming Tia's conked out at this point. Yeah, at this point, she's... She's out. It's been... 
It's been a long day. Yeah. But already. Right. We'll similarly take some rest. Yes. As you settle down, we move over back in the city of Menzo Berenson, where Aegis and the Tagalong Leilani are making their way to the slums. It's a area to the uh, to the eastern side of the uh, of the Claw Rift, the place that you all arrived in. Um, kind of haphazardly put together. Uh, also the area next to the, uh, the underground lake that uh, is here in Menzo Berenson. Uh, mostly humanoids and goblinoids live in this area. Uh, a lot of surface dwellers have found space here. Uh, but absolutely almost no drow. If I'm going to be perfectly honest. If you see a drow here, they're probably here to... Keep watch. Either keep watch, or <laughs> uh, do not so very nice things to some of the residents here. Sometimes both. <laughs> Um, I said it takes got a look better. Around. It wasn't. It's not. It's not there yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, takes a look at how the slums are faring at the moment. It's. It definitely has improved. It especially for the goblinoids, because um, uh, from what you understand from your time here, uh, most of these goblinoids were essentially slaves before everything got thrown into turmoil, and a, a lot of them, their lives have uh, generally improved, uh, but as for the surface dwellers, they, it's rough for them. Even after a year, it's the adjustments that need to be taken to get used to a life living underground. It is it is taking its toll on some of these people. Okay. So he'll do his usual rounds of going to the Garyon scene if the structure is still holding up the the uh, people there and how they're faring. And seeing if um, if anyone actually needed any any help at the moment. Uh, go ahead and give me a perception check. With the ten, uh, a lot of today's events are kind of lingering on your mind. So it's mostly a lot of cursory glances, just kind of looking about, and for the most part, it does seem like uh, today's a pretty, a pretty, I don't want to use calm. It's, it's tense, but like a silent sort of tense. The one where a lot of people are just kind of staying in their homes, you know, just kind of spending time with important people to them. That sort of deal. So, it's tentatively calm. Alright. Looks like the situation is fine for Right now, at least. Kind of mumbling to himself just a bit. Better go retire. And then looks over to the... The, the, the small child that's been following him. And what about you, Leilani? Oh, yeah, same for me, I think. 
been a long day. I figured that there might be something that you wanted to talk about, considering that you followed me. Hmm. She kind of looks at you. And you see... Well, I don't know what you see. Make an insight check. She looks very pensive. Huh. Talk about what you, huh? Seemed like there was something on your mind, at least. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Listen. Are we like, where are we right now? Are we alone? Um, when you're in this kind of shanty town slums area, um, there really isn't anyone on the streets at this time, uh, aside from the very rarely uh, seen drow every once in a while, but they don't seem to be paying the two of you any mind. Hmm. Listen, it's no secret that we're not really on the best terms, I'd say. Right? Honestly, I consider that we're pretty well off, considering the past. But, as I've said before... An enemy of my enemy is my friend. And right now we are friends. <sighs> Don't kid yourself. We are not and have never been friends. And you know, I that's okay. I really have no interest in being friends with an arrogant little whelp like you. But that's fine. <laughs> I helped you back there. Not for you. I would have happily left you to die in that tower. But there are more important things than just you. I think you're misunderstanding something about me. Hmm. But that's fine. Yeah, sure wouldn't want to clear up any misunderstandings or misinformation around here because that wouldn't have avoided all of these problems to begin with. But regardless, I I, I, hmm. Hmm. I wonder about that. Do you? Yes. What about? Maybe I could be a little more forthcoming than everyone else has been in this dreaded place. Well, looking at you, Leilani, in the in the uh, piercing red eyes of yours. I am quite straightforward, and when I get a mission, I follow it. And even with all of my time here, very little has been said. Very hush hush secret. So you're telling me you don't know shit about what we're doing here either with that thing that we took? Is that what you're suggesting? 
you really don't know anything about the plan. Not particularly. Is he telling the truth? You want to inside him? Yes, please. Okay. Mm. That was a shit roll. So, looking at Aegis, Leilani, you get the feeling that the where the the hush hush that he was keeping about was very specifically just about the item in question, the the black staff. Mm -hmm. But anything else that might be done. No. Doesn't seem like it. He's actually kind of an open book right now. Roll another insight, Leilani. This thing in my head is an after info about Blackstaff. Hmm? My theory. Leilani's current theory is that this thing in her head is not after info about the black staff. That was a ruse. With an inside of 27. You are e able to not let the voice cloud your judgment and you are able to confirm that Aegis is speaking as he is speaking. Huh, I see. Oh, but you don't definitely, I feel silly. Mm -hmm. But you definitely know that it was trying to influence you into thinking oh, that, into Aegis thinking it was lying. Oh, definitely. Leilani's no stranger to manipulation. <sighs> Listen, kid. I did you a favor by opening that door so we could all get out of there, didn't I? And... Aegis kind of turns around and says... Past has been done with. I'm not really keeping what's the word? Score? Track? I thought you were yeah. supposed to be smart. Yeah, that. Well, regardless of whether you're keeping score, I need you to do me a favor that would be to both of our benefits. And I need you to do it really quickly. That spell you cast on that halfling, cast it on me now. I need you to make an intelligence saving throw, Leilani. Turns around as you say that. I also need ages to make the intelligence saving throw as well. Whoosh. An intelligence save, you say. Right. I I'm asking a wizard to make an intelligence save. <laughs> Ooh, that was a uh, bad damage roll. Um, Leilani. That is in bad damage or good damage? Uh, -oh. uh Leilani, you take 17 psychic damage. Ooh. And Aegis, you feel this pressure wave of psychic energy erupt from Leilani and hit you. And you uh, take half, uh, which would be eight psychic damage. Damn! Ah, do it now! And 
he just quickly like grits his teeth as he reaches out and casts non-detection. All right, I need you to make an intelligence check. Just a intelligence check. Yeah, okay. it means a spell casting a boo. Uh oh. Fuck. As you no. cast this spell, man, you rolled a natural one too. That's not good. Uh, as you cast this spell onto Leilani, the psychic waves that kind of assaulted you rack in and close in and break your concentration on the spell. And the spell is not cast, and I need you to roll an insight check. <laughs> oh. Rolls. oh my god. You are not alone in your mind right now. You can make a charisma saving throw. And you can't Ooh. push it out. Whatever was in Leilani's mind is now also in yours. And given that's what it wanted and really doesn't like Leilani, um, yeah, Leilani, yeah, make another intelligence save. Oh god, this one's for all the marbles, because I'm very close to death. Oh, natural 19. Nice. Feel that connection snap and not very nicely as you take 10 psychic damage. Ooh. That's three over what it needed to be, even though I saved. Uh, and Leilani's eyes yeah, just gotta... roll back into her head and blood gushes out of her nose and she just falls over backwards. Uh, gritting his teeth as he says, All oh, that big talk, you stupid kid. <laughs> uh, yeah, so So there's something in my brain. Yeah, there's something in your brain. Leilani has collapsed to the ground. Uh, and you have a ages. very limited amount of time to do something about it. I don't got much I can do, unfortunately. As that took my last spell slot for a third level. Oh no. I guess as he's saying, as he says that, he kneels down and tries to stabilize the stupid vampire. <laughs> Madison. <laughs> oh my god what is happening being no stranger to to uh you know quickly uh patching up wounds especially psychic uh wounds in this day and age uh even though she's undead with it being psionics it's really just kind of the same thing as a living person uh so you're able to very quickly know exactly what to do to quickly uh Stabilize and make sure that she doesn't uh, go into a, a, a vegetative state and essentially die from it. Uh, Leilani, roll a d4. Alright, enjoy. 
enjoy a three hour nap. Uh, Aegis, <laughs> you have an unconscious small vampire child. Not dying anymore, but you still have that. <sighs> there should be a vacant room somewhere. Um, yeah, he'll just toss you in whichever room is probably available. Emphasis on toss. Yeet. <laughs> Yeet the child. <laughs> Now both of my characters are unconscious. <laughs> Roll survival. Okay. <laughs> There's gotta be an achievement oh. for knocking out both characters. I mean, that's, that's just the universe correcting itself. After two natural, <laughs> after two natural twenties, <laughs> two natural ones. It's only fair. How have so many of your rolls been natural ones or twenties? Um, <laughs> I'm using a coin. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. There is not a single room available anywhere. You can't believe it. <laughs> it's, and they it's, were roommates. That, that's a that's about all. That's a that's a natural one. <laughs> <sighs> Just this defeated gasp as he's like, all right. As he just takes, goes to his his room that he has here. <laughs> All right. Aegis, you put up Leilani in your own room, uh, and do you uh, enter your reverie? Do I what? I'm probably mispronouncing it. Because I can't pronounce it for some reason. But it's... Reverie? Th yes, that's it. It's... it's That's the actual term for... That's the the term for the trance that the elves do? Um, I mean, he's a half-elf, so I don't necessarily... You're a half-elf? Yeah, he's a, he's been a... No, actually, wait a minute. I thought you were... No, I'm... Yeah, you're high-elf. <laughs> At least on your character sheet, you're high-elf. I am. I... Why did I... No, wait, because <laughs> Veritas form is high. Okay, I, I was getting confused there. My bad. <laughs> yes, the trance. It's got not, not much left or to do, so... Alright. Yeah. The hours tick by. And... Uh... You are the first one to complete your long rest. Uh, Leilani, I don't know how you take a long rest. I think I was looking at that. I think it's just the normal way. Just a normal way? Okay. Uh, then you would uh, awaken to see that uh, Leilani seems to have gotten into a more comfortable position and is asleep. Granted, it's the stillest sleep you ever saw, but asleep. <sighs> Was he able to take me in there without a problem? Or was there a wall of force preventing me from entering the residence? Well, given that it's his residence and he is the one yeah. taking you in there, Fair enough. that would imply permission. Okay, just making sure implied permission is enough. You're like, yeah, I just don't throw you in the river. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe, oh, not God. maybe implied permission is the wrong word. Intended permission. Mm. As the owner intended for you to enter. 
that would cover your your base for that. Yeah. And coming out of the trance, they still have that that sense in my head. Uh, coming out of the trance, you can make another charisma save. Okay. Still there. So my so I got my rest in. You did get your rest. So you you do have your spell slots back. Um, moving away from Leilani, he will attempt to try non-detection on himself. All right, give me another intelligence check. you cast the spell on yourself and you feel the spell take hold but then it you still feel this you feel a hole in it like you're protected from anything else attaching to you but this thing's still attached to you Yes, I'm compromised. And does a face palm. Well, better report this. Miss Nyla. And he heads to the to the mage tower. Alright. Uh one thing you would know is that you are you'd be very early uh, you would know that more than likely uh, uh, Nyla would be more than likely asleep given that she is human so we'll put that out there <laughs> Do you still wish to to do that? You would probably. Uh... He probably would. He would go to the infirmary and check on the condition that Eve is in. All right. You go to. You go there. Um. You see that the, the nurse is there, and you see that Komori is also still there. Kind of looks up to you. Right. You are one of the surface elves. Not as long rest mm -hmm. as the others. Unfortunately... Apparently there's something that was taking a hold of the mind of the fat little vampire and it went to me. I feel some sort of presence on my mind now. You feel a presence? Yes. Mm. I came to report this as soon as possible. Well, if you'll allow me, I can take a closer look at it. I was also curious about the condition of Eve and the Black Staff. Unchanged. 
but I do think I have a working theory on how to determine if there is anything to be done. But a conversation to be saved for when all of all include all involved are here. Yes. I don't need to explain it eight times. Now, as for your mental invader, and immediately you feel another presence, his presence uh, uh, coming onto your mind. Do you let him in? Because you have non-detection up. At this point, like, yeah. All right. He will enter your mind. Oh. understand why you would fall for something like this. Elder brains are typically hard to resist. Oh. You'll have to work with me on this. Oh my god, that's... The vampire's gonna hear it. Anyway, on the count of three, push on that wall. One, two, three. And mm. gi give me a Christmas save with advantage. Okay. I suck. You really need to put more into it. <laughs> <sighs> we can try one more time, but... It will likely be annoyed. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Alright, again. Another Christmas save with advantage. Whew. You push on the wall. The wall does not like that as you take eight points of psychic damage. <sighs> I may need Sorry. more. It's... <sighs> well, I suppose. Let me explain to you at least what you what you have fallen host to. There is an elder brain, the hive mind of a illithid community. It has made a telepathic link with you, and at the moment can see and hear everything you can, as well as read your every thought. Just great. Right. This will be problematic. There is one thing that might help you, although I'll have to call back Jarl Axel. Would you mind waiting for him here? Yeah, that sounds fine. I... There's... There's really not much that I can do at the moment. I would even suggest staying out of any of these discussions or talks about... Best not to say it. Your yes. mind will naturally be drawn there. Try to think of think of a powerful memory to you, and try and focus on that. Something that means something. Emotion helps cloud the mind, makes it harder to read. And 
Ouch. Aegis actually grabs hold of his green pendant, pendant and begins thinking about his family back in Evermeet and the Green Isle. About what he left behind in order to protect them. About an hour passes until eventually the, the familiar and unmistakable figure of Charlaxle enters. So, a elder brain, huh? Great. Yes. Well, given that we can't push it out, we might be able to make it a bit easier to make it uh, a bit more foggy. And he actually takes off his eye patch and hands it to you. This helps. I will be wanting this back once we figure out a better way of kicking it out. I Gamoriel understand. says that they have an idea that might help with that as well. Along with all this, motion's over to Eve. Thank you, Jalaxel. Right. Just and think happy thoughts and wait until probably wait here be best. Don't need to expose yourself to any more people. I should be fine without it for a little while. Gumorio has trained me well enough. Ages will put on the eye patch. All right. You put it on, and your vision is not limited, as you would expect. You can see through the eye patch as if it was normal. If it was just normal vision, unblocked. Wow. More than that, um, you can actually, through the eye patch, you can see almost... the. F you can actually see the magical connection between Eve and the staff, as well as any other magic items in the room. You, you, looking over at Jarlaxle, he is covered head to toe in magic. Uh, magical items. Uh, you actually sense nothing on. But yeah, but um, wearing this eye patch, you realize that whilst you wear it, you essentially have detect magic on without concentration. As well as, wow. um, is also has the properties of a mind shielding ring. So whilst the connection is still there, it's acting as kind of an interrupt. So it's not getting clear information from you anymore. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. All right. The hours roll on, and Jarlaxle actually uh, leaves uh, and goes and retrieves the various members of the party. I was waiting for the word before clicking that uh, printing long rest button. You all have gotten a long rest. All of us? All of you. Eve got a head start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, being comatose is as long a rest as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. But yes. So, at the Wandering Weasel, Bosch and Tia, and you kind of wait for Virgil, but 
you get the sense he has the worst hangover and constantly gives you assurances that he'll catch up. But as you uh, walk out into the normal bar area, uh, it's early in the day, so there's almost no one there, except for Jarlaxle, who seems to be sitting there waiting for you. Ah, there you are. Oh, hey. So I do have some good news. Plan seems to be ready to go. Gamoriel stayed up all night and figured it out. A uh, bit of a wrinkle. Don't tell anything important in front of Aegis. Little little thing got into his brain. But we'll figure that out as well. Okay. Um, that seems like kind of an important story, but yeah, I guess I won't say anything in front of him. Nothing important, anyway. Nothing, like, critical that you wouldn't, you know, say, tell to the person that wants to end the world. Okay. I'll do my best. I take it Virgil is, uh, sleeping enough? Uh, good. I can tell he had a rough night. Seemed like it. Athergate was also similarly out of sorts. Um, well, before we actually go to the, uh, back to the school, uh, we'll need to pick up Leilani from, uh, from Aegis's place. Also, have you, did you see where Daitora ran off to? He's a slippery one uh, to find. Oh, uh, sorry, no, I, um, I tried to make friends with him, be kind of wanted to just lurk in the corner. I'll like, point towards whatever is the darkest point of the bar. Looks over. Is Daitora there? There is a shadow sitting. <laughs> I think, is that him? I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. And then there's a flicker, and the shadow materializes into Daytura. Ah, yeah, that's it. It's uh, it's time to go, but we need to pick up someone. Lead the way. Excellent. Goodbye, Tobin. As you all walk out back into the city eventually making your way over to those slums area and to a particular one. Uh, Jalaxel had no problem getting to this place. <laughs> Since we were in the bazaar, I was really tempted to you know, go shopping, but I'm not going to derail things right now. <laughs> there may be an opportunity later. Just think of all the awesome shit they have there. Could be some awesome shit. Mm -hmm. Yes, the slums. Leilani. But yes. Uh, Leilani, you are awoken by a knock. Sits bolt upright with a snarl on her lips. Ah! <sighs> Leilani, are you in there? Uh, what? Oh, good. She's awake. Now, are you decent? <sighs> Just wordlessly gets up, storms over to the door, throws it open. Oh, good, you are. Where the fuck am I? I believe this is Aegis' abode. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Arrogant indeed. Am I decent? What kind of. <sighs> what? You know, someone.
everyone sleeping. Not everyone sleeps with all of their clothes on. I, for one, happen to enjoy... Uh, kind of second guesses it as he looks down at this small child in front of him. Glaring. Uh, mm. uh, maybe too much information. Maybe. <laughs> you know, she's older than she looks. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, for me... Fair. <laughs> That's fair. Anyway, uh, plans are coming together. Comorial has something. Yeah, great. Anyway, the, the snot nose kid. Have you, have you talked to him? Seems like something bad was going on. You mean Aegis about the little brain worm thing? Yeah, that fucking thing. Right. That's it's an... gone now, right? People took care of that, right? No, it's an Aegis now. Oh, great. But we think that what Komoria has planned for your friend Eve will also work on him. She's not my friend. I don't know. I can hold on the wall. That's great. That's great to hear. Let's go check on that, I guess. What? You seem like you want to be involved. Do you not? No, yeah, yeah, that, that would be, that would be nice. Excellent. The more the merrier, as I always say. And he, uh, leads all of you back to the school. And inside the infirmary, you see Aegis and, uh, Nyla Stuoth and someone else that only a few of you recognize, uh, Natasha Yaga. Uh, Aegis, you've seen them around, and you know that she works directly with Nihilus Um, but you don't think she's an official member of the Waterdeep Mages. Um... He's not thinking about that at the moment. Right. He is, he is... has actually a smile on his face, and he is practicing trying to be happy. <laughs> that will most definitely be an <laughs> odd thing to everyone there. Ah. Oh. Hello there. Hey, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> <laughs> really took my advice to heart. I like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're all here, Camorio. Right. Now... As we all know, there's a connection between this small halfling and this exceptionally powerful artifact that, as rumors have said, does seem to kind of looks over at Aegis and just and and actually will mentally tell everyone in the room except Aegis there is a presence in the staff, a collection of souls, as it was, seemingly every black staff that's held the staff before it. Before it. it seems to have made a connection with the halfling, and my attempts to make a connection with either of them have been rebutted. However, I do think that there seems to be a place, a location within this connection. Whilst we can't reach out to it, I believe I can place your consciousnesses inside of this place. And from there, you may be able to figure out something. Uh, 
So, um, are we gonna be like seeing what it's like in Eve's head? Probably not just hers. Probably also something to do with the Black Staff's mind as well. Oh. It's somewhere in between, you see. Uh, since we're, um... Eve's friends here aren't super um, caught up on what's going on with the Blackstaff. Any chance that maybe somebody who does know what they're doing uh, help us out? I will stare meaningfully at Natasha. <sighs> well, that is... A good point. However, at least like there uh, are... give us a briefing or something. Right. Under normal circumstances, Nyla and myself would go and do this as well and enter. And I say this not trying to say that you are expendable, but there are certain events that are arriving that neither Nyla or myself can miss. So unfortunately, we can't be risked with this operation. We don't know what's in there. You could get stuck. You could suffer damages. We don't know if the Black Staff would retaliate. It's not something we would force anyone into. But we figured since she was your friend, this would be the best chance to save her. Of course I'm gonna help. I mean, you didn't think about dumping me out when I was in tough times. So, Aegis will be attending as well, because, well, attempts at rebuffing a certain mental connection that he has made with an elder brain have proven unsuccessful. So, with this connection, the connection that they share should also become visible as well. So you would be able to do something about that. But that also means that there will be the mental presence of an elder brain there. Which may complicate the already complicated operation. But given that we can't have one of our top agents infected with a elder brain and we're on a fairly tight time scale right now, we don't have a lot of options. Just, just uh, hap trying to mimic hap happy humming as he's trying to tap his feet. Now, we can only... Now, I can only put a certain number of you in there so all of you can't volunteer but I do need to know who I'm putting in you heard my answer already right so you and Aegis that's two
Indeed, your friend, your problem. Mm -hmm. Well, normally I would agree with that, but this staff seems pretty integral to whatever you people are planning against the one that ate the light, right? They kind of look at each other and nod. Glances over at the shadowy armored figure. I mean, I don't know what your mission is about because no one shares anything in this place, but that sounds pretty important. I mean, um, they did say that might see stuff that's important to the staff, so if you come in, then you might find out some more stuff. Also, I'd like Leilani to make a insight check. Ah! Damn. Ooh. Why did it have to be in that one? <laughs> My expertise means nothing. We're all rolling. We're all just roll the again. I want here. you to get it. Roll again. <laughs> roll again because <laughs> Dean told you to. <laughs> okay. If it's in that one, then the universe is just telling me to to shut the fuck up. Okay. Um. You recall a certain part of the conversation where when Aegis was going in, that there's a possibility that the presence of the Elder Brain will be there, which I don't know how Leilani feels about this, but it would be an opportunity to strike back at that thing. <sighs> if Leilani wants that. Leilani is nothing if not petty. <laughs> Well, you know, I was sent here by the Blue Court to help with... Waves a hand dismissively. You know, the mission. So, sure, I'll join in. And Although, I feel like it's important to note that... That thing in Aegis's head seems to be after very specific information. We might potentially be taking it somewhere it wants to be. When it was in my head for a brief while, it kept mentioning that it wanted information about the staff. I suspect that that might have been a ruse, but who is to say, really? <sighs> Likely they are wanting information about why the staff is so important. Hence, this, this is exactly why we haven't told you. It is for this exact <laughs> reason. If you had known, the enemy would have known. Massive eye roll from Leilani. Oh, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, we were right, we were wrong, we didn't need the information, sure, sure, we get it, whatever. It's not a question of needing the information, it's a question of the information being at risk. Even now, I can't tell you because Aegis is in the room, with this thing in his head. Leilani step. who's speaking? Uh, this would be Nyla. Leilani stares at Nyla. Is Nyla the one who spoke in our heads? No. Uh, the one that spoke in your heads is Comorial. Hmm. Well, you can't, maybe. Inclines her head in Comorial's direction. He could, if you were really inclined to share that helpful information. <sighs> or is it just an excuse? <sighs> Fine. I'll tell you what. We will share this information once the link with Aegis has been severed, and no other links remain. 
once <gasps> once that is established, we will tell you. Gosh, you people are so obtuse. Fine, that'll do just fine. And Taitora, I know that it's not exactly interesting, as I've heard you say, but with your connection to the Raven Queen and with the amount of souls at play, I don't know. Maybe you have a bit of insight on the matter. Mm. I am not as learned as others available. I do not know what I have to add. Your connection may be all that is needed. If you insist, I will assist. Excellent. Well, um, to make sure you don't hurt yourselves, please uh, lie on the beds and motions to uh, four beds. Right. Uh, as you climb in, Bosch, Teal will go to you just like, I'll make sure to keep an eye out here and make sure nothing happens. Hey, yeah. Uh, I mean, and with what we have. Careful. Maybe with what we have, our connection. Maybe you'll be able to check in with the outside. She sort of shrugs. We'll give it a try, yeah. Yeah. Careful out here. I mean, I don't really know these people. And it might be a distraction from something else. Right. Well, I'm not completely alone. And she kind of motions her eyes over to a particular rapier that is lying next to Eve's bed. I don't think she's left all night. Um, to be, uh, it would be fun when we needed her, but she's been, she's been with us a lot. Yes. We'll see you on the other side. Safe. You'll come back. And she uh, gives you a little kiss on the cheek. Uh, Aegis, uh, <laughs> Jarlaxle, uh, mm -hmm. whilst you are in your happy thought zone, helps you over to a bed. Just one leg after mm -hmm. the other. There you go. <sighs> and Titora, um, if you really want, that one is kind of over in the corner, so it's kind of more your aesthetic. I don't know. <laughs> Whichever one's available. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Well, just try not to move. You'll understand when you're in there. I hope. <laughs> and he unleashes this wave of psychic energy that kind of enters and permeates the four of you. And you sort of, kind of, slowly close your eyes and drift 
off to sleep. And then you open them, and you see that you are all standing in a room that you are not familiar, that all of you but one are familiar with. No, the other way. Only one of you is familiar with it. Aegis. This place looks familiar. <laughs> Roll a history check for me. Alright. Actually, Leilani can make this as well. <laughs> uh, that's a six. Much better. An eight. With that, you, even with those low rolls, you immediately recognize that you're in the Blackstaff Tower. Oh. And you see that there are eight hallways leading out of this central room. And you look down one of them, and you see a small halfling with ginger hair reading a book as Eve you look up and your friends are here and that's where we're going to end the session <laughs>